My name is Rob Spence, and I'm a cyborg. I lost my eye after a shotgun accident six years ago. These engineers helped me build a prosthetic eye with a wireless video camera inside. Now, they call me iBoard. This is Adam Jensen, the main character from the video game Deus Ex Human Revolution. He's also a cyborg, but from the year 2027. He's got a camera eye as well, and some other high-level augmentations. I recently traveled around the globe to meet some of today's most advanced cyborgs. I wanted to find out how far off we are now from Adam Jensen's prosthetic technology. Naturally, the eye is the first thing I wanted to look at. Prosthetic eyes in the world of Deus Ex are digital, and they interface directly with the brain. My own bionic eye is simply a camera that transmits video to a receiver with no connection to the optic nerve. I went to Finland to meet Mika Terho, a blind man who actually had such a connection. I was involved in a research project in November 2008. I was in a surgery and there was a chip implanted underneath my retina. It was a test version that I had. I knew that it was only uh, about three months' time that I will have the chip. The retinal chip is very small in size. It's a three by three millimeters. It's placed right underneath the retina in order to replace the broken photoreceptors. And it's curving like, a little bit like this way. Yeah. Adam's eyes don't just restore vision. They also add situational data, known as augmented reality, also called Terminator vision. Augmented reality is the superimposition of data onto the world that you see. For instance, we have a firefighter mask, it's in prototype right now, that allows the firefighter to get some essential data today. It uses relatively low fidelity computer processors to present them with oxygen levels, uh, ambient room temperature. In this world, in the firefighter environment, if you make a fist, it activates the menu, and it puts the menu in your hand, and it's actually on your fingertips. I anticipate within the next year we'll have functioning prototypes and in the following year we'll have products that we can bring to market. Adam's eye is a combination of a video prosthetic that replaces his eyeball, like my own, that is connected to his optic nerve, like Mika's retinal chip, and that incorporates augmented reality, like Tanagram Partner's fire mask. It would appear that we have the building blocks for Adam's prosthetic eye today. But what about prosthetic arms? Prosthetic arms in the world of Deus Ex are much stronger than human arms. And they have more options. They're more accurate. And they even help you play piano better. Meet Jason Henderson from West Virginia and Kieran McCammon from California. So these arms are, are what? I mean, how, how do these arms work? Um, the remaining muscles that are in your arm um, have electrical signals that come from your nervous system. and Like these ones? Yeah, yeah. So I have a myoelectric sensor, one here, and then another one on the other side. So when I contract one muscle, then the hand opens. When I contract the other muscle, then the hand closes. Can you flip the bird with your... I can... Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to put that I in there. I don't care. <laughs> okay. and then I have a wrist rotation unit, which is independent of the hand, where if I contract both muscles at the same time, I can essentially rotate the hand one way or the other. I am now filming your bionic hand with my bionic eye. That's pretty cool. 
sort of, it's kind of I'm thinking, but I'm not thinking, okay, I've got to open my hand, I'm just thinking as if I had a hand there and I just want to open it. Where is biomechanical technology going in the future? You know, I think this has laid a good foundation uh, with the product life, such as the ILM, and I don't know if it'll be robotics uh, that ultimately replace missing body parts, but genetically, I mean, I can see it becoming very quick, you know, next decade or so. Like growing Actually, clone genetic uh, arms of your own body? Yeah, like yeah, I can see growing it. other Jason arms and seeing yeah, if they yeah, attach them? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you plot out, you know, the most famous, I think, Moore's Law, and you just plot the speed, the processing speed of CPUs, you get an exponential curve. Or every 18 months, biomechanical devices double in, in their capabilities, in how better they are in terms of being close to the human body. Weapons, um, that would be an interesting one. Adam has prosthetic legs that are faster, with more endurance and power. Where are we with prosthetic legs today? I met with David Johnson, a research and development engineer at Osser, a world-leading prosthetic legs company in Iceland. And this is Staff Sergeant Heath Calhoun from Tennessee in the United States, who is actually pretty quick. Uh, well, my name is Heath Calhoun, and I, I guess technically I ski for the United States Disabled Ski Team. and. I was wounded with the United States Army back in, in November of 2003. and kind of led me on the path that I'm on now. These are your prosthetic legs here that you walk around on all the time. You have a knee unit, the pylon, and then the foot. You got flex in the heel, you got, right. and it's split so that right. you get it to flex on both sides. Like a ninja slipper. Like, yes. The knee is a hydraulic knee unit that, that has a microprocessor inside it. The knee is updated, the microprocessor is updated 50 times a second by a sensor that's in this pylon that tells the knee whether or not to add or remove hydraulic resistance. Yeah, I'd really like to see a leg that, that will do stairs. Um, right now that's a just a really big hurdle as a above knee amputee that, that we have to overcome. You're able to use your thigh muscles to be able to push yourself up and, and we just we just don't have that. At Osser Prosthetics in Iceland, they've developed technology that addresses this problem, the power knee. What's the difference between the power knee and most legs on the market? Most legs on the market, the, the microprocessor ones use braking systems and they catch you if you fall. None of them gives you power. So for example, standing up from a chair, a sitting position, going upstairs. The power knee assists me in getting closer to a normal walking style. As somebody who's at a company developing this stuff, do you find that technology is moving more quickly as time goes on? Yeah, I think yeah, I think technology moves more quickly now. At the moment, it's more a matter of what you can imagine. I mean, who says that a normal human leg is the optimal thing for you? I mean, the species evolved to this leg that we have now, but who says that's the end of the line? You're shaking like crazy. So you realize the last time I shot a gun, I blew this eye out, right? Quit shaking. That was close.
prosthetic arms and legs are beginning to approximate the functionality of our natural limbs. Current bionic technology uses external and kinetic sensors. We're only just beginning to experiment with neural prosthetics like those of Adam Jensen. Is the, the technology that Adam Jensen have possible by the year 2027? Absolutely. Absolutely will we get there. But the real challenge is the brain to machine interface. Every brain is unique and it grows based on your experience. So where you process a certain piece is relatively where I process it, but you, there's not an exact location. Well, if you compare any other technical device, cell phones or whatever, and then just, just the rate of development is so quick. So retinal implants, artificial prostheses will definitely follow the same path. That's an interesting one. I mean, choosing to have your limb removed so you can get a, you know, a bionic replacement because it's you know, better than the real thing. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of ethics debates around whether that's even, you know, medically ethical. I think technology moves quicker than we imagine. And there are small places here and there in the world trying to do stuff that you don't even know about. Technology's moving so rapidly, many theorists are saying we're on the verge of fundamentally changing as human beings. In the meantime, for those of us missing parts of our bodies, we'll keep exploring and upgrading. It's possible we are the pioneers of a new cybernetic age, not unlike the world of Deus Ex Human Revolution.